is Tara Frazier, and Tanya is my sister. I'm what? a soulmate. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. Tell me, tell me what you can about uh, your sister. Uh, Tanya was my best friend. I felt like we did life together. Um, she was the, I don't know, she was the best person that I knew. She was sweet, she was funny, she was kind of scruffy, like, we were very much tomboys back then. Um, but, I mean, she took care of me. I remember she had gotten her first job that summer that she was killed, and she was just about to get her first paycheck, and she was going to go buy me and her um, a pager, because it was, you know, just a few weeks before my birthday. Um, so she was just a generous, loving responsible person everything that I've read about her says that uh, she just had she was just joy in a bottle that everybody just was attracted to her joy um, what are some of the things about her that that you stink about every now and then that pop in your head the things that I think about um, I think about her coming into my room and just we kind of stayed up and talked and um, just like a sleepover, but, you know, we were sisters. Um, I think she used to bring a stuffed animal with her to school, to middle school every day. Um, she had a different one that she would bring. Um, I don't know, she was just funny and loving. And I wouldn't say we were the necessarily, like, the happiest teenagers, but, like, together we were good. We, like, we had a lot of fun together. So I don't know. I think I just think about like how generous she was with me. I was always irresponsible and like spent all my money that I got and she was always, Okay, fine, I'll get it for you. So she was very much a big sister. Um, yeah, I just, I remember her being silly. She was very silly at school. Uh, she had a lot of friends. Everybody knew me because of her at school, because she was a grade older than me. So I don't know, I just feel like she always took care of me as her little sister. You talked about her being your soulmate. Tell me a little bit how you felt that then and do you still feel that now? How I felt the day... Well, no, back when you were kids, did you feel oh. like she completed, she was your soulmate? Yeah, I mean, we were always together. Um, People thought we were twins because I, we didn't necessarily look that much alike, but we were just always together. And back then, I knew how lucky I was to have her. Like I, I probably should have showed it more often, and you know, we weren't the most affectionate, but I appreciated her every day. Tell me what you can, what you remember about. What happened back then? Uh, well, I remember her not coming home when she was supposed to. Um, I remember asking if we could, me and one of our good friends, was she was had spent the night, and I remember asking if we could go down and pick her up, but we couldn't. And I remember just waiting for her, and I was like, She's got to come home. Like, I, I slept with my window open all night because I'm like, she's just out. Even though she had never, ever, like, snuck out or, you know, not come home, um, I couldn't fathom that anything had happened to her. And I remember, <laughs> I remember I was downstairs playing the Nintendo, um, and my mom came down and just looked at me and, it was like the most numbing feeling. And then a lot of the rest is a blur after that. How, um, how did you as a family just get through that moment? I mean, what you can remember, how much did you guys get through the day-to-day? 
I just remember being so alone after that. I, I don't remember how I got through it. I, I relied on my church a lot back then. We were very involved in church. We were like altar girls and we went to the little teen, you know, late nights at church. That's That was our activities. So I did have a lot of conversations uh, with the church to help me understand why that could happen, you know, to reassure me that she wasn't gone. She just wasn't with me. So, I mean, that's kind of how I got through it. I had some good friends that also loved Tanya very much, so that helped get me through it. But I've felt alone ever since. 29 years later. How you say that 29 years later? I mean, here we are. I mean, we're this is the 29th year since that 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 happened. How how does it still hurt as much? Yeah, it still hurts just as much. I can like function, but the moment anybody says anything about her, or I see somebody that we went to middle school with, it makes me cry. And I love talking about her, um, but it makes me cry every single time. It, it hurts. It hurts immensely. You we were talking a little bit about your church and how they kind of came to your side. I know that uh, I read that someone at the church uh, donated her burial plot. Yeah. Uh, what did that mean to the family that someone would step up and do that? I mean, the, the support really was amazing. We had, you know, friends and church members that helped post flyers when she was still missing. Um, and then they did really just have an outpouring of support for us. I didn't, I don't think I even realized that somebody had donated it from the church until years later, but I mean, obviously that's heartwarming um, for other people to care so much as well. Um, at the time, uh, police thought she ran away. You knew her better than anybody else, and you knew that was not the case. Yeah, yeah. When we called and reported her missing, they didn't do anything because apparently you can't do anything for, I don't know, 24 or 48 hours, whatever it is. But they said she probably just ran away, she probably just off with some friends. There was talk about she could be in a gang and maybe we don't know. And she was the sweetest, innocent, well, like, super innocent. Um, and I knew, and they just didn't care. They didn't listen. I felt like they didn't care. I felt like nobody took it seriously. Uh, how much interaction have you guys had with uh, police since then? I haven't had much. Um, when I have been able to talk to them, I feel like I've always gotten the same answers. And it's really like, I can't, we can't release much information, we can't say much, but we're working on it. But, you know, years and years later, when it's still the same thing, it, it doesn't reassure me. Why can't you talk to me? Like, I'm family. But I felt like since I was a kid, they've said the same thing to me. One of the things that we were told today about the case was that it is solvable. And we talked a little bit about how there's a reason why they're being so public about this case that maybe they're moving in a positive direction. Are you optimistic that one day you'll have some resolution here? I, I am hopeful. Uh, I, I can't imagine this just never being solved and us never having that closure. So I am hopeful that it will be. And I think lately it's been getting more attention and people have been reaching out and doing amazing things for us. Um, and I appreciate it so much because it does really give me hope that it will get solved. <clears throat> that said, we want people to speak up if they know something. So knowing that you have a full audience, people across our region, what would you tell that person who knows something? 
please say something. She was a kid. She was a 14-year-old little girl. Like, how do you, how do you keep this a secret? I mean, we're all grown now, and I'm sure you probably have a kid. You at least have to have a heart. Like, say something. Tell somebody. Report it anonymously, but somebody knows something. As this story does get talked about a lot now, and it is getting a lot more attention, what, what do you want people to remember about your sister? I think everybody who knew her loved her. Like She was just such an amazing soul and human being, and she made my life better and so many other people's life better and joyous. But she didn't do anything to hurt anybody. She was a very innocent kid, a loving kid. I, I, I want people to remember her smile. I want people to remember her laugh. I want people to remember, like, she was my other half. Like, we were always together. And I, I just, I want people to remember her. Do you ever, and I only ask this because I know to a, a degree, somewhat of what you're going through. Do you ever talk to your sister? Yeah. Yeah. I used to write poems to her. Uh, now that, you know, I'm older, I go up and just sit, you know, at the cemetery and talk to her and cry. Sometimes laugh. Um, it makes me feel a little bit closer to her. But, yeah, I always talk to her. What do you think she would say, looking at the life you've lived up to now, the kids that you've raised, and all that you've done with your life? What would she say? I, don't, I think about how my life would be if she was here. I think about how she would be with my kids. Like I can just picture her as an aunt to my kids. Um, I think there'd be a lot of things that she would probably talk to me about. <laughs> Uh, and not be so happy with me, but I do think uh, she would be proud of me, and I know she would be proud of her nieces. Uh, each one of them is named after her. My oldest is Tanya, and then my middle child has her middle name, Marie, and then our baby is Angel. Anything else you want to say or, or share about your sister or what you and your family have gone through up to this point? like when somebody took her from us they just ruined so many lives we none of us have moved on none of us have been able to get over it even with closure it's not going to make us get over it but they took such an amazing human being that didn't have a chance to reach her full potential they took her from all of us from the world <laughs>